Hi, welcome to this walkthrough video of the 2021 2.0 update for True Strike, Project Sam's cinematic orchestral percussion library for contact. I am Martin of Project Sam, and I'm going to take you through the biggest new features this update has to offer. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but True Strike has been around for a while. The original version was released for Giga Studio back in the day when you shipped samples on flat shiny discs, ask your dad. Later there were two special editions for Steinberg's Helion player, and after that it moved to the contact platform, and it has lived there ever since. And what's cool, and also kind of humbling for us, is that even after all these years, and with so many other percussion libraries out there, True Strike is still being used by a lot of people. It has kind of earned a special place in many people's templates. And I think the main reason is that the sounds just still work really well. So why this update? Well, it's just a bit of a shame if you have these sounds that stood the test of time, but you have to use them like this. That's rather dated, especially if you're a new TrueStack user. So we've been working on a new presentation, a new shell, if you will, for the library. And as a big thank you to all you TrueStack users out there, this update is 100% free. And it looks like this. And there's a ton of new features. Let's dive into it. First up, the browser. You can now browse for sounds right inside the TrueStack instrument. Here's the list of instruments that many of you will recognize by now. And clicking one will instantly load it into RAM in one of these slots down here. But you can do more. You can now filter for instrument type, so you can list just the drums, or just the melodic percussion, or all instruments made of wood. And here too, one click loads the instrument in a split second. What you can also do now is filter by articulation, or playing technique, if you will. If I click the articulation tab up here, I again have my instrument list on the right, and now a selection of articulations on the left. So now I can see just the instruments that feature hits, or rims, or tremolo, or special effects. And if I click one of these results now, it will only load the articulation that I've filtered for. The other samples will not be loaded into RAM. You can tell by the grayed out state of these texts and icons. So this is an efficient way of doing things when you only need specific sounds. And maybe you spotted it already, but the last articulation filter is Adaptive Sync. Yes, True Strike now supports Adaptive Sync, a feature we introduced with Symphobia for Pandora that automatically synchronizes crescendos and rolls to your tempo. I'll show you in a bit. There's two more things I want to show you in the new browser. The Kits tab has a selection of new True Strike kits. They are collections of multiple instruments. When I load a kit, then apart from this cool progress bar on complete control, I get a combination of percussion instruments using multiple of the slots down here. Uh, finally, each kit, instrument and articulation in the new browser has a preview button. For the kits, a tiny little demo will play, giving you a solid idea of what the kit is about, like this. And for instruments and articulations, you will hear a single hit representative of that selection. And that's very handy. One last new browser feature I want to show you is auto spread. There's a toggle down here, single or multi mode. Single mode is what you're used to. You load one instrument at a time, and that instrument will always overwrite what's in slot one. Multi-mode, on the other hand, will start out in slot one and then move on to the next free slot when you load more instruments. This is a fast way to build kits, especially when used in combination with the auto-spread option over here. Auto-spread is an optional feature that will automatically spread newly loaded sounds across the keyboard. Let me show you. I'll filter for the hits articulation, 
and load a random selection of percussion instruments from the list with auto spread enabled. Now look at the keyboard while I do this. See what happened? These hits, which are from different instruments, are now mapped to adjacent keys, which are not per se the keys they are mapped to normally or originally. With auto spread off, some of these might have overlapped or might have ended up in very different places. So again, that's a very cool new feature to quickly build kits. So with this new browser, TrueStrike is now an all-in-one instrument. There is now a single NKI file, this one. However, it's good to know that if you're an existing TrueStack user and you are updating to the new TrueStack version, the old folder structure and instruments will remain. Nothing will get deleted. The old instruments also still work just fine. And the new all-in-one NKI file is listed underneath over here. To use the new version of TrueStrike, make sure you load this instrument. So let's take a look at the new interface and at what it can do, of course. Let's start with a single instrument, the snare ensemble. This is the performance view and it's where you'll spend most time. As you can see, it loaded the snare ensemble into the first three slot. Above the mixer slots, there are three main sections. On the left, we have the main options for the selected instrument. The main option for the snare ensemble is a toggle for snares on or snares off. You can switch between these by clicking them. And I can command or control click them to unload the samples that are part of that option. Right now, only the snares on samples are loaded. I can also switch using a controller. By default, TrueStrike sets the controller to key switching. And you can see the assigned key switches over here in the corners. And you can reassign them by dragging this control here. You can use the arrows to select a different controller. If I want to switch snares on and off using the modulation wheel instead, I can simply do so like this. Will now display the CC ranges instead of the key switches in the corners. In the middle you'll find the brand new positioning stage. The dot represents the selected instrument on the concert stage. Dragging it vertically controls the mix between TrueStrike's three microphone sets from close, the stage, to far. And dragging it horizontally pans the instrument from left to right. You can also switch to a more traditional view, in case you prefer to control the mic faders directly. And this is also where you can load and unload mics from RAM and route individual mics to different outputs. Then on the right, we have the controls for each individual percussion sound. These are the percussion sounds that are mapped from left to right on the keyboard. And if I trigger these, you can see that the controls change accordingly. I can decrease the decay time for the stick on stick hits, but keep the decay time for the standard hits the same. I can also set a different dynamic controller for each sound individually by using the arrows. By default, all these sounds are mapped to velocity, but I can also control the tremolo, for example, using the modulation wheel if I want to, like this. You may have already noticed that me playing on the keyboard made this yellow line move around down here. Now this is what we call the mapping bar. It shows you the order of the different percussion sounds from left to right on the keyboard. And the yellow line shows the selected sound. I can select a sound by triggering it, but also by clicking it in the mapping bar. And as you can see, the keys mapped to that sound are displayed using the same yellow color on the keyboard, both on screen as well as on complete control using light guide. And that's extremely useful as it allows you to very quickly identify the different groups of sounds. If I play a standard hit, I can tell that this sound is not only on the C key, but on the D key as well. Both keys are yellow. If I trigger a different sound, it will show me which keys are part of that group. 
These rims, for example, cover four keys. And by looking at the mapping bar, I know which sounds are adjacent. Next to the rims are the sticks. Next to the sticks are the flams, and so on. And just like over here for the main instrument options, I can load and unload individual sounds by command clicking or control clicking them. I now unloaded everything except for the hits. And as you can see, the keyboard now only shows the C and D keys as being mapped. If I want to add the tremolos to this, I simply click it, and there it is again. What's good to know is that this mapping bar is unique for each of the main instrument options over here. That's a little tricky to tell with the snare ensemble, because the articulations are exactly the same for the snares on and the snares off. But if I load, say, the timpani in slot 2, you can see that I get very different things depending on the selected option over here. The hits, tremolos and rolls are exactly what they are. The hits only has hits mapped on the keyboard and nothing else. But if I select the effects, the mapping bar appears because it has different sounds mapped across the keyboard. Now that we have the timpani loaded, let's take a look at Adaptive Sync. We introduced Adaptive Sync in Symphobia 4, Pandora. It allows you to have all crescendos, rolls and other samples that have a build-up to automatically sync to your host and tempo. Now, this two-strike update does not include any new sample content, but we did go back to the original pool to clean up the percussion rolls to make them compatible with Adaptive Sync. All sounds that offer Adaptive Sync show this little logo, both in the main options over here as well as in the mapping bar down here. With an Adaptive Sync sound selected, I get some extra options on the right. By default, Adaptive Sync synchronizes to the next downbeat. This means that it adjusts the roll sample automatically so that it ends exactly on the downbeat. Like that. And that's very useful, especially on a dedicated track in your template, something called timpani roll to downbeat, for example. I can set the number of beats manually as well by changing the mode here. Now the roll will always be two beats long, regardless of when I start the note. And this is tempo dependent, so if I change the tempo, the roll will remain two beats long. That's very cool. And as you can see in the browser, under the Adaptive Sync filter, there's quite a list of instruments and sounds that offer this new feature. There's also a kit dedicated to Adaptive Sync. Let me quickly show you. This is five percussion instruments, all set to an Adaptive Sync crescendo roll. And this checkbox over here is enabled so that the beat slider here is applied to all five instruments. And that's Adaptive Sync in True Strike. We hope it will be a time saver for you. Next up, NKS, the native control standard. True Strike now supports NKS. This means it's fully integrated into the native instruments ecosystem. You can browse all instruments and kits from the native browser in, for example, Complete and you can access the most important controls right from your complete control. Slot selection, articulations and sounds, distance on the stage, effects, and adaptive sync. Complete control also shows you the instrument color for each slot, as well as the selected sound group in yellow. Let's take a look at the next view up here in True Strike. We were in Performance view, the next one is the Mapping view. The Mapping view gives you almost full control over the mapping of the different sounds in an instrument. The Mapping view is linked to the Mapping bar I showed earlier. It shows you where the selected sound is on the keyboard. But here, though, we can change this. I can drag the mapped keys to a different spot. And as you can see, the color on the keyboard, as well as the order of sounds in the Mapping bar, change with it. I can also trim a group of sounds using the top and bottom locators. If I'm building my own kit and I need only a single key 
of the rim sound, for example, I can do so like this. And this you can do for each sound group individually, which allows for a lot of control. A quick way to shift the mapping of the entire instrument is to flip this switch. Now I don't see the selected sound anymore, but I can shift the entire snare ensemble to the left or the right. There's also a bunch of velocity parameters to play with down here. So all of these mapping options are extremely useful when creating your own kit. And it is in fact how we created the kits that you can load through the browser. If we take a look at say the big and bold kit, you can see that we not only unloaded the sounds that we didn't want in the kit down here, but we also used the mapping view to move all the remaining sounds in the right places. So that's the new mapping view. Let's load the ringtone maker kit and take a look at the remaining two views. This is the effects view. And as you can guess, it adds a useful effects chain to True Strike with saturation, filters, reverb, and delay. Some of the kits have specific effects enabled, such as this one. And of course, you can add your own. The effects in the left blue section are per slot. So each instrument down here can have its own effect parameters. The effects in the right dark blue section are for the entire True Strike instrument. Here you can choose from a number of different reverb impulses, but each individual slot can send its own reverb level. Then finally, there's the settings view, which allows you to change some more under the hood settings for each instrument slot individually. I can turn on and off round robin, release trails, the sustain pedal, things like that. So that's True Strike's four main views with lots of new features and of course the new browser. Now let me show you two more things before I round off. Down here in the bottom left corner we have two icons. The left one takes us to the global settings. These are global because they affect the entire True Strike instrument. So all 10 slots. It's quite a useful list of things. You can change the default key switch positions. You can make the fade of view the default instead of the XY stage. You can choose to keep the adaptive sync samples unloaded by default because they can take up quite a bit of RAM. You can always load them later by clicking. And you can set a bunch of color related options over here, such as that yellow selection color. And you can also turn on or off the help tool tips that you may have seen come by in this video. It's this bar over here that gives you a short summary of each control when you click or touch it. Then there is the lock icon. This locks up part of the interface to prevent you from, for example, accidentally removing an instrument from a slot or loading or unloading sound groups or shifting the mapping in the mapping view. When you load one of our kits, this lock option is always enabled, but you can always unlock to make changes if you want. And finally, if you want to start all over, reset all the slots and parameters, you can use the clear button in the bottom right corner, just like that. And this will take you right back to the browser. And I think that's it for this True Strike update. If you are already a True Strike user, again, this update is 100% free. Just start the native access application and update True Strike from there. And note that your old instruments will remain and existing projects will not automatically update to the new design and features. You'll have to do this manually by replacing the instruments for each track. And if you watch this video but do not own True Strike yet, please consider getting it. Now, last but not least, this update is actually part of an exciting larger roadmap. You can expect more of our libraries to receive a similar treatment. And I will share with you here that next up is Symphobia 1. So thank you for watching, enjoy the update, and see you soon. Bye bye.